A very good evening and thanks for clicking on to the Sunday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Uh, continuing with the cool pattern, we've got high pressure now starting to build over the northern half of the British Isles. Uh, with low pressure to the south, we're going to continue to pull in a fairly brisk easterly airflow. The problem with the easterly airflow is that although it's chilly, it, it's not overly cold given the fact that, you know, a, a lot of folks would maybe say, oh, easterly flow um you know it, it should be bitterly cold and um you know we should see scenes like we've seen back in the you know the end of february early march 2018 but of course it, back in that event uh, the winds were coming all the way from siberia right across the continent and into the british isles the problem this time around is the air uh, itself is just simply europe isn't overly cold and uh, you're actually pulling the air in from the southeast of uh, Europe rather than off Siberia. Um, and even snow cover across Europe isn't overly uh, significant at this moment in time. But, uh, you know, uh, let's wait, watch this space because I do think uh, the, the effects of the sudden stratospheric warming that is now underway, of course, uh, should start to respond through the troposphere and uh, down into the the final eighteen thousand feet of the atmosphere as we go towards the middle part of the month like i've say, said before i think on the video and also on twitter let's just be careful not to rush the cold in because there is the lag we do have the coupling between the stratosphere and the troposphere the modeling is pretty firm in that now so we should see a response and uh you know hopefully um the stratospheric warming that we do see will um, build over the pole it already has done that but if and when the split occurs with the polar vortex you want a piece uh, on the North American side and you want a piece on the European side of the Atlantic with blocking over the North Atlantic and Greenland here the the U wind the the, the, the mean zonal wind uh, is expected to reverse to an easterly as opposed to a westerly we're already starting to see that as we go through the various layers of both stratosphere and troposphere we're starting to see the winds uh, starting to change uh, direction here which is always a good sign but uh, you know in order for you to build a, a cold pattern following a sudden stratospheric warming you typically want to see a mass of bitterly cold air start to develop over Scandinavia and over Eastern Europe and with high pressure over the North Atlantic extending over the top into the northern part of Scandinavia that in a sense is what happens that is the grabber of that bitterly cold pool of air that develops over Eastern Europe that then starts to pull it retrograde it westwards across the continent and into the UK and you also want to lay down the snow cover by doing that you're actually uh, modifying the air mass less out of the source region the source region being uh, Russia uh, lay down the snow cover that carpet of white and therefore you you have minimal weakening of the cold as it presses westwards towards the British Isles here so there's a lot of different things to consider but there is a lot of positive when it comes to winter weather. So the current cold spell has nothing to do with the sudden stratospheric warming that's begun now. It will mature within the next week. And then watch it after 10 to 15 days later, we should see the response of that strat warming over Europe and over the UK here. So... Uh, looking at the uh, overview at the moment here, high pressure, like I say, building in. Let's skip through the animation. So we're extending the high pressure from the Atlantic across the top of Scotland into Scandinavia, low pressure to the south. And you can see here that we've got the air coming in from the east. So the moderate cold, if you will, I'll just pause this for a second. The moderate cold that we have got um, is the reason why we're only seeing rain, sleet and snow. We're not seeing solid slow snow to all levels. But there is pulses of colder air embedded within that easterly flow that is allowing the snow level to drop periodically to sea level, which is quite interesting here. But we're going to continue over the next few days, taking us into the middle part of the, the upcoming work week, 
we're going to see the easterly winds continuing to pile showers in to eastern and eastern Scotland, eastern England, always drier, always brighter further west. And over across the top of Scotland, we're going to see uh, clear calm conditions, bright sunshine by day, cold by night, especially where there is a pretty solid snow cover over the highlands at the moment. We could very easily see minus 10 in the next few nights. Um, only one occurrence of minus 10 so far. We got fairly close the last couple of nights. But uh, the conditions haven't just been ideal for maximum cooling. There has been a lot of, of kind of cloud cover um, that's been suppressing the, the, the atmosphere's ability to release any residual heat during the daytime back into space. But you get clear skies, light winds and a fairly chilly air mass in place. You drop the temperature very easily to minus 10, minus 15 degrees. So we'll pull in the easterly winds through the first half of the week. Second half of the week we've got a frontal system that comes down. And I'll just skip back slightly. You can see the frontal system here. This is on Wednesday at 2100 hours. Uh, according to the GFS, high pressure to the west, low pressure to the east, southeast. And we've got that frontal system. It's going to bring and pull an, a fresh surge of bitterly cold air into the British Isles here. So even though you might think, oh, well, we're starting to get weather in off the Atlantic. In, in fact, it really isn't because it's coming down from the north. It's not coming down from the east. But if we skip through the sequence here, we're going to reinforce the shot of cold. Precipitation will uh, change mainly the snow, even the low levels here, with this fresh surge of cold air coming down. Uh, so expect uh, uh, you know the snow, snow levels to, to increase here. Uh, but you always notice here these areas of low pressure are coming down from a due north direction. Why? Because we've got high pressure out over the Atlantic here. So it's basically coming down from uh, a straight northerly direction here. But it's interesting here as we skip forward here. Still messy. Still unsettled. Because we've got low pressure in control. But these cold areas of low pressure is going to essentially bring fresh punches of cold air in over Western Europe and over... Um, over the British Isles here so certainly the cold will continue throughout next week and perhaps have a fresher by the way look at this here for next weekend uh, we have got some very cold air coming down snowfall potentially the low levels here and this is folks this is, is the potentially the beginnings of that the, the initial response to that sudden stratospheric warming it isn't the main the, the main meal so to speak it's perhaps a mere starter of what's to come. So this, of course, date next Saturday. This is the 16th of January. So, of course, this would be right in line with the period beginning with the response to that strat warming. And it looks as if it could get very interesting indeed as we go forward. And, of course, the modelling is just simply not seeing uh, the severe cold in some aspects because we need to see the stratospheric warming take place in order for the model model doesn't know how to handle this strat warming so if it doesn't know what it's dealing with it's of course not going to have a, a particularly accurate uh, solution in the in the longer term here but it uh, certainly uh, like i say if we can get the strat warming uh, developing and and positioning the, the the pieces of the vortex in the correct places that is what's going to maximize the cold as we go into the middle and, and latter half of the month here. So let's have a quick look at the 850 millibar temperatures here. We'll skip back and you can see here that um, we continue to just see the easterly airflow here coming in over the next uh, few days here. W uh, then we start to get a little bit of a, a moderate brand. Then in comes the frontal system down over the British Isles, reinforces the cold. Snow levels will drop. We've got another push of cold air coming in. You notice here we're kind of getting this hammer effect of cold Arctic air into the equation. Then at the very end of the loop, notice how the mild air it kind of wraps up and, and north of the British Isles. And we start to see the potential of something coming in from the east here. And finally, let's have a quick look at the snow. Uh, like I said, it was it's very important to see snow levels increase over Europe. In order to pull in that cold air you can see how the snow cover does extend and start to expand over Europe especially over the British Isles here and that would of course be an important factor 
and, and maximizing the potential of cold as we go forward here. We've got a lot of winter coming up, folks, over the next few weeks here. Keep it right here on markvogelweather.com. Keep it on Mark, uh, on on YouTube, on Twitter, um, because there is a lot of exciting things coming up. That's it for today. I hope you have a great day. Back in the next few days with more. Bye for now.